what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to take a look at this 2022 ford mustang mach 1 big shout out and thank you to alta auto group for providing this new mustang for today's video definitely check out the link to their website linked below they have an awesome selection of cars just like this and the model that we're looking at today is a mach 1 premium finished off in shadow black and has an msrp at sixty two thousand three hundred dollars Underneath the hood of this 2022 Ford Mustang Mach 1, you're going to find a naturally aspirated 5-liter 8-cylinder engine. This V8 pumps out 470 horsepower with 420 pound-feet of torque, and it's paired to a 6-speed manual transmission, sending all the power to the rear wheels. Curb weight is around 3,700 pounds, and it runs on a 16-gallon fuel tank, so you're looking at 15 miles per gallon in the city with 23 out on the highway. 0 to 60 comes in at 4 seconds flat, and it'll top out at 168 miles an hour. Overall length is 188.5, with wheelbase at 107.1. Width is 75.4, and height is 54.3 inches. The Mach 1 also features a Tremec 6-speed manual, magnetic ride suspension, and then 6-piston Brembo brake calipers up front with ventilated rotors all around. And then now on to the styling with the 2022 Ford Mustang Mach 1. This is the outgoing S550 generation as the 2024 model year comes in. So we have these traditional looking three bars within these LED headlights, have a really nice look, all blacked out and sunken into the bodywork. We have a massive grille finished off in a metallic gray color. I really like that contrast. We get gloss black up top in the upper grille and that same metallic gray for the pony logo up front. You can see these cool circle designs that kind of mimic fog lights. You can see that in the upper grille. And then down below, we get a massive black plastic front splitter. It has a very aggressive design. You can see turn signals on the far side and more of that metallic gray. And the front end really does come together nicely. Of course, this looks like a traditional Mustang. Has great lines all around. Very bold and aggressive. And then leading our way to the hood, you can see Mach 1 on this graphic with gloss red around it, as well as a satin black area right in the center. We also get massive heat extraction vents up top with really sharp lines all throughout the hood. This really does look so good with all these sharp lines and the addition to that front splitter really make the Mach 1 stand out. Taking a look at the split five spoke wheels, they're 19 inches in diameter up front and you can see that same metallic gray and I like the red lettering of the Brembos. You can see a sharp line around the front wheel and then Mach 1 is written out on this front fender. There's a very large side skirt as well as a nice red pinstripe running through this side profile. Then you can see the wider rear tires. You can see more of that red pinstriping on the side of the rear bumper Then a nice sharp line running around this rear fender. I love the sharp lines in the side profile. The S550 has that classic fastback design, it really does come together nicely. You can also see we have that same satin metallic finish along the side mirrors with an integrated turn signal and then black trim around these windows. We get a sharp line on the roof as well as a shark fin antenna and I think all the lines come together really well. As we make our way to the rear end you can see just how wide it is with the rear end bulging and then more of that metallic gray finish along the spoiler mounted onto the trunk. You get the th classic three bar tail lights have a very nice look they are three dimensional and then it's all gloss black right in the center with Mach 1 written out as well as your backup camera. As we're at the rear end now, you can see more sharp body lines, as well as a massive rear diffuser finished in the black plastic. We get the dual quad-tipped exhaust, then a really nice design in the center with your integrated reverse light. All of the sharp lines come together, and the S550 still looks like a fantastic car. So there's a good look at the exterior with the final Mustang Mach 1. Still a great looking car, and I like how the Mach 1 looks a little bit more special than just a basic GC with the performance package. So we have Mustang's key fob, you have the logo on one side, and your basic buttons. I can go ahead and lock the car though, and it does have the smart key. Just grabbing the door handle, it unlocks, and we can check out this interior. This Mach 1 has a pretty standard interior with black leather, you get the normal seats, and then you can see some white accents all throughout. If we go ahead and take a look at the door panel now, finished off in black, we have the smooth black leather along with the contrast stitching. You can also see some perforations in the centerpiece. We have an aluminum color for the release handle, lock and unlock, as well as memory seating. Then you have window and mirror controls as well as your grab handle. You get a nice armrest and then a little bit of storage down below. And then we get Mach 1 written out on the door sill. 
There are power controls for forwards, back, and lumbar. Then we have manual recline in back. You can see the really nice smooth leather with the perforated leather all in the center. You get a really nice design leading their way up to the backrests. You can see we get a really nice white piece of leather, has a cool stripe, and then some smooth leather up top with more stitching. This has a black leather steering wheel finished off with some aluminum accents and then black stitching. And then now inside the Mach 1, keeping my foot on the brake and the clutch, we can go ahead and fire it up. Taking a look at the gauge cluster now, this is a full LCD screen. You can see your tack on the left with your gear indicator and then speedometer on the right. There is a center area in this particular configuration. You can configure that using the buttons over on the right side. I can scroll up and down. You can see all of your trip information. We have fuel economy, tire pressure, and then into a blank screen. If I go ahead and hit the pony logo that's on the screen, you can see my mode. You can go into here. You can adjust that and configure it. We also have your exhaust mode. You can go into three different modes as well as a quiet mode on top of that. Then we have all of your track apps like acceleration timer, brake performance, line lock, and lap timer. We have the shift indicator you can adjust as well. Rev matching, launch control, all sorts of really cool features in here. If I go ahead and tap that pony logo again, you can see the cluster appearance. You can change this. Right now it's in the drive mode selection. So the drive mode selection over here, you can just toggle this switch and go into your different drive modes. Going into the sport mode right now, you can see how the tack is a lot cooler looking. And then going into the next setting for track mode, it's gonna get really aggressive. I can just hit okay, you get a massive tack. And then continuing into different modes, we have your drag strip mode as well, which will give you the same depiction. And then you have a snow and wet mode. So really cool, you get all the different drive modes and the cool different configurations. So we get the Pony logo right in the center, controls on the left side for Bluetooth and audio, as well as cruise control, and then more controls on the right side. We get your stock on the right for all your windshield wipers, and then turn signal over on the left. Taking a look at the left of the steering wheel, we have all of your headlight controls, and then down below that, there is an area with a little bit of storage, and then your trunk release. You can see the classic double bumps within the dashboard, which sadly is gone for the 2024 model year. So this is the last time we get this nice retro dashboard. We have our Mach 1 badge on the right side, then a really cool looking brushed aluminum plastic. We have two air vents as well as oil pressure, the vacuum of the engine, then the infotainment screen right in the center. Pretty basic as you've seen on any Ford. Going into the audio, you can see all the different information. We have climate controls that will come up as well. Very easily, you can adjust where you'd like it to go, fan speed, dual zone temperature, your phone integration, as well as navigation will pop up. Then we have different apps, and then all of your settings. If I go ahead and take the car and put us into reverse, you can see our backup camera will pop up with some guidelines. You can even tap this plus icon and get a closer view. So not too bad looking. Underneath the screen, we have more climate and radio controls. You can see volume on the left, tuning on the right, then a few other basics. The climate controls have a nice aluminum colored plastic piece where you can adjust the temperature. And as you can see, when I toggle this, it comes up on the screen. We also have heated and ventilated seats, more controls right in the center. And then down below that, we have that drive mode toggle, your steering wheel as well. You can go into different modes for all of your steering, how you'd like that to feel. Then we have traction control hazard and that start button. You can see a little bit of storage up front with a USB as well as 12 volt. Then some nice stitching along the center area. We get this really nice Tremec manual transmission with the round shifter, and then you can see a manual parking brake. There's even some stitching along it to the boot, and then we get two cup holders on the right side with more of that aluminum color. There's more stitching, you can open this up, and we get a pretty good sized center armrest. And then on the right side, opening this up for the glove box. And then one last look at the interior of the Mach 1 Mustang. It looks pretty much like a GT Premium in here with the same seeds and uh, pretty much everything else is identical aside from that Mach 1 badge. Nice and familiar interior, certainly not a bad place to be. Of course, the manual looks very fitting for a muscle car. Then you can also see dome lights up top, we have a garage door opener, and then we have your mirror. The Mach 1 does have available back seats. If you pull the handle on the back, we can get this out of the way for easier entry. You can see these back seats have a cool bucket design, finished in the same leather with perforated in the center, as well as a nice stitching. 
Now there's no real amenities back here. This can seat two people. It's not bad in the back of a Mustang. I'm five foot 11. Uh, certainly not the worst back seat in the world. However, uh, it's definitely pretty darn cramped, but in a pinch, you can actually fit two full-size adults. The driver's seat is still set at my height. My knees just have to go on the outside of it. So it's not too bad. The seats themselves are pretty comfortable. You just lack a lot of headroom and not the best on the legroom. Other than that though, it's nice at least that a Mustang is pretty practical. And I have a handle back here to get the seat out of my way. And then onto the cargo area, we have a button on that interior, the one on the key fob, or you can actually just press right above your license plate. That'll pop this entire trunk open. And as you can see, we have quite a lot of storage space. We do have an upgraded subwoofer back here and a pretty good amount of space. This is a very practical car, pretty decent size opening as well. And then the seats fold down nice and flat, as you can see, and it really does open up the interior cargo area of a Ford Mustang. Going through the door now, they fold nearly flat. The opening to the trunk is actually a pretty good size as well to make this an extremely practical two-door car. All right, guys, we are setting off in the Mach 1. We're in the sport mode. I love rowing through the gears with the Tremec manual. Let's go real quick right into track mode. <laughs> oh, the 5.0 is one of the best sounding V8s on the market. I love it in the stock form, especially with the exhaust valve opened up in that track setting. It sounds so good. Uh, the Mach 1 is just such a blast of a car to drive. And as we enjoy some twisty turns with the magnetic suspension and everything, this car handles really well. It's pretty light on its toes. You can still feel it's kind of a heavier car, but it's really, really nice in here. I just love how balanced and solid the car feels. I think it really is a big step up comparing it to a GT. Not everyone thinks that, but I really think it is. So planted around turns. It's really, really fun to drive this car. And I just love how meaty it is. Obviously the Mustang, I mean, it's a decently sized car. It's got some grunt to it with a naturally aspirated V8 but I just love how solid these cars feel. And I feel like the Mach 1 just totally feels like a step above a GT. Even if you opt for the performance package with Magnetic Ride, there's something with this Mach 1 that just makes it feel that much tighter. And I'm sure the Tremec definitely has something to do with that. It's not the fastest car out there. It's still just a five liter naturally aspirated. It's not, you know, gonna blow your socks off or anything like that. If you want that type of acceleration, of course the GT500 is gonna be the one that gives you that insane horsepower. But this is just a well-balanced car. It's kind of like a GT350, maybe a little bit toned down, uh, more like a bullet Mustang, I'd say, but then toned up. So it's got a pretty good blend to what it has to offer. And I think it really is just a good blend of a car. I think Ford did a great job sending off this S550 out with a bang. I mean, they added some pretty cool trim levels the last few years. I think the Mach 1 and the GT500 are pretty solid cars. All right, so flipping around to my perspective with the Mach 1 Mustang. Very healthy motor and the suspension is so good. This car is so stiff and yet comfortable at the same time. It is a very, very planted car to drive. Everything with a Mach 1, I feel just is tightened up comparing it to the GT. And it just makes the car that much more precise. You know, the GT is a really good, normal performance focused muscle car, but the Mach 1 just totally takes it up a notch to where it feels like a higher level car, which it should, it costs more, so it should feel better. I love the Tremec. The clutch pedal is so easy to use. The steering is nice and refined. It is just a really good Mustang. And I think Ford did a great job, like I said, sending off the S550. This is kind of the end of the road. Well, obviously it's the end of the road for this generation of the Mustang. I think this was always a really good uh, platform. I think Ford did a great job from the beginning making this. And you can tell that they kind of revised this car to be as good as it could possibly be until the new generation comes out. 
only real downfalls it's not really crazy downfalls and it's hard to make fun of anything in this now that the new one has been unveiled obviously this center screen it was never that good it's okay i really don't have any complaints because it does everything you need backup camera's fine navigation works fine i mean it has everything you need it's nothing fancy but it gives you the information so really can't complain too much with that especially since the new one's all new with a massive screen overall it's a pretty good bang for the buck kind of performance car the interior refinement is all right. You know, this was never a luxury brand car or luxury focus. So there are some plastics, like this is not aluminum, it's just cheap plastic. It looks fine, it feels fine. So again, it's nothing like detrimental to what this car has to offer. Now the Mach 1 in general, the interior really isn't all too much more special than a GT. I guess that's one downfall with it. You gotta get the Recaro seats and things like that to really get the cooler looking interior but those are all also available on the GT. So I guess they could have done something a little bit more unique with the car to make it look drastically different. The exterior looks really sweet with the stripe and stuff like that, but they didn't really go too crazy with extra things on the interior to make it unique. But I think when you drive it, that's when you see the benefits of a Mach 1 to where it just feels so much tighter. I've driven so many of the normal GT Mustangs and it's a fine car, it really is. I mean, good value for the money. But if you just want that extra step up in the handling, the precision, and just a little bit more solid feeling car, I think stepping up to this is a pretty good bang for the buck. It's not that much more expensive. I think it's pretty well worth it. Especially the fact that we get the Tremec manual. It's just such a better transmission than the Ford one. <laughs> and you just can't get better than that. This is a very old school raw Mustang that is mechanical. You tell the car what you want it to do, and it does what you want it to do. You know, it's a car that can handle pretty decent, uh, quick enough for just having some fun, and uh, really can't argue with too much about that. So I think that is then it for the 2022 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Definitely a great option from Ford, and it'll be exciting to see in the new generation what trim levels they come out with, what Shelbys we get, what Mach 1s do we get, and just see the whole next level of Ford Mustang. But that is it, guys. One of my last videos now with an S550. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you for plenty more content. And then once again, big shout out and thank you to Alta Auto Group for providing this Mach 1 for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website linked below. They have a pretty ridiculous selection of pre-owned cars, and some of them are nearly brand new like this one. So that is it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.